Uh, our next speaker is Yehuda Schoenfeld, and he's going to uh, talk to us about Asia. So what I'm going to talk now and to go through with you is a new syndrome that um, we have reported about it, and we have named it Asia, which means autoimmune syndromes, which are induced by adjuvants. It's not necessarily a full-blown, full-characterized autoimmune diseases that we are aware of, like SLE, systemic sclerosis, or rheumatoid arthritis. However, it might be, as you will see, this syndrome may evolve during the years into a full characterized autoimmune disease. So we have reported it in Journal of Autoimmunity in 2011. And um, to characterize the syndrome, it's some kind of a special complex of clinical manifestations, which one of the most important phenomena are chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue is not something that you feel like now. It's uh, something that you wake up in the morning and as a patient say, they are sucked back into the bed. And as you can see, sometimes the incubation time following the exposure to the adjuvant may be the classical three weeks that we believe that autoimmune diseases may develop after infections like rheumatic fever, this is misleading, and sometimes it may be years, as you will see later on. Uh, there is a chronic stimulation of the immune system by the adjuvants that I will list later on, and this adjuvant, as you will see, may appear in multiple vaccines. It may appear in silicon, and we will talk about uh, these two um, factors, environmental factors. It's usually genetic, like all autoimmune diseases. And therefore, luckily enough, it's not so common. However, we have to recognize it. One of the most important uh, adjuvant is alum, and we will talk about it later on. And there is no question that there is involvement of the central nervous system. Therefore, many of the patients suffer from memory loss, and some of them have cognitive impairment. As the syndrome, if it is diagnosed early, and you follow the subject or the patient, eventually some of them will evolve into a full-blown picture of one of the 80 diseases that we have listed in our book, Diagnostic Criteria for Autoimmune Diseases. We have defined major criteria and minor criteria, and we have analyzed them in 93 cases, and they are highly sensitive and specific. Having said that, we are open in the future to more analysis, to add some criteria, maybe to erase some criteria, and so forth. I will not dwell into the criteria, but you can go to the Journal of Autoimmunity and read it. So where do we have adjuvants? Actually, adjuvants prevail everywhere, also in this room. But by and large, adjuvants um, are contained in infection, and most probably many of the mechanisms by which infections induce autoimmune diseases are by adjuvants. Those who worked in the lab and used foreign adjuvants uh, they do know that the foreign adjuvant consists of dead mycobacteria. So by and large, many of the infection, when they induce autoimmune disease, they actually use adjuvants to induce the condition. Adjuvants definitely um, are contained in many of the vaccines, not of live vaccines, but in synthetic vaccines. And as you will see, they are contained, or actually the silicon behaves as adjuvant, contrast to what we have believed in the past. I will not, today, I will not talk today about the Gulf War syndrome, the macrophage myofastoitis syndrome, and additional uh, syndrome that may be contained or included in the Asia syndrome. I would like today to speak, first of all, about the silicon, as you can see. And it became very popular recently because in France,